In this video, we are going to be exploring more on effects and presets. Um, the first thing I want you to do is go to your exercise folder, double click on effect and preset 0 to composition. And as soon as you do that, you should have this. We have this simple animation that we've created. So what we're trying to do is to try and make this composition, this our animation looks better. The first thing we want to do is to change our background to gradient. You can see these colors that are here. We are going to apply the same color into the, the top scale animation as well. And of course, apply glow to the star animation. So how do we achieve this? We achieve this by adding effects to all these layers that we've mentioned. Now let's get to it. So I'm going to stop my playhead. Then I'm going to probably put it somewhere here. I'm going to scroll down. I can see my background. One other thing I forgot to tell you, I'm going to also try and animate in and animate out the text. All right. So I'm going to take the background. I want to add effects. I want to add gradient effects on this. So how do I add effects on my background? We go to effects. So this is telling us if you want to open your effects control, which is already here. Right? And this right here will reveal the last effects you use on any layer. And here are all the folders that have all the different kinds of effects. So in this particular one, I'm looking for gradient effects and that will be in the generate folder. So I'll go to generate and then you can see we have different kinds of effects, four color gradient, advanced lightning, fill, fractal. But the one I'm looking for is the gradient ramp. So click on gradient ramp. And as soon as you do that, you can see that our background has already changed. Now I want to show you a trick. So you come down here, right? You see this is the lock. So I'm going to uncheck. The next one is the solo icon. So when I solo this, you will only see the background alone. And the rest are still there, but you will not see them on the composition. Right now, I'm focusing on the background. And as soon as I add the effects, I have my effects control that pops up. And I can see the effects that we have applied to it. The next thing we to try and tweak the settings to what we really want. The first thing that is here is start ramp. This stand ramp is dealing with the location of the first color here. We have, so we have start ramp, we have start color. So if I change this, right, remember this is x axis, this is the y axis. So this is trying to change the value of the black. Black is the, is the start color for this gradient. So I'm going to just reset this. One other way of adjusting this is. You click on your gradient ramp then you can zoom in and out using your middle mouse and you, you can see this small handle that is here right let me zoom in a little bit you can see this small handle that is here so this handle is different from this handle of course if you take this you are taking the whole solid so let me just undo that you can take this and then adjust it's practically the same thing with this so i can adjust it this way or you can so click on this and then Take a target that you want it to be, or you can just drag it on the screen. I normally just look for it on the composition and then drag it. Right, so this is our start color and our start ramp positioning. Of course, we have the end ramp, we have the end color. I can change the end ramp and I can adjust it as well. But for now, I want to first of all change the color. So I'll click on the start color and I'm going to use like a dark blue. Let me go with this something like this then i'm going to go with the well, i'm going to click on white then go with something bright let me take it down a little bit more okay so i have something like this i know it's not looking interesting right now but if i adjust this and put it to the side take this and drag to the side we have a really cool shade of blue but this is not what i really want actually so if you come down to ramp shade you can see we have two different options so i'm going to choose radial ramp radial ramp is trying to blend the color in a circular format uh so i can take the dark shade and i can just put it at the center and take this right you can see that it's you know it's blending it in a very circular shape uh well one thing i would like to do i would like to just swap these colors i want the dark to be outside and the, the bright values to be inside so i have a function here called swap colors by click on this it will swap the colors then this other function is ramp scatter so by click on this this is very subtle it's actually just blends in 
blending with more but it's really 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 soft so you might not quickly notice it then this is blending with your original so this is actually like you know opacity blending with ori original color of the solid but for now i'm just going to take this as zero uh, and then i'm still going to tweak this some more so i'm going to take the dark shades i'm just going to drag it out so i have something like this and we are done with our gradient ramp effect so i'm going to uncheck this i'm going to see how this blends with our graphic and i think it's not looking bad right yeah i think it's not looking bad though i can change the color and take it make it more darker right so you can have more contrast so we've added our gradient to our solid and the next effect i would like to add is this color that we see here you can see that we have yellow green then something like orange than a white and if i have to investigate this if i click on my circle the very first one is this yellow now the color of the shape is white but on the composition is yellow and that's because i've added effects an effect called fill fill is is an effect that changes the color of your layer so that's what it does and it's actually way better to use fill on your layers than using or the primary effects that comes with that particular layer and this only applies to ship layers alone it's only ship layers that you can actually change the effects from from its original source but every other layer you add fill to change the color so i'm going to show you what that means in a bit so i have these circles here i've already changed the color so from circle five to six seven eight are just white which is the primary color so i'm going to add effect to circle five now i'm going to make sure that circle five color is this yellow so i'm going to click on this and i go to effect and go to generate then click on fill and as soon as i do that the default color that comes with it is red but i can change the color i will just use this color picker here then select the yellow and it's easy to change the color to the yellow color that we just selected so there's another way of you adding effect to your layer so let me click on this next shape this next circle and now i can come to effect and preset so this is actually this is for you can see that this folder is actually very similar to the folders you can see on your effect so i can go to generate and do the same thing right but instead of doing that we know the effect that we are looking for it's fill so i'm gonna i can just come here and type in fill and the fill we are looking for is under generate so i'm going to click this and then i'll just drag and drop on top of my shape layer and i'll change the color as well i'm going to use the green for this i'm going to click on the next circle here i'm going to also change the color so instead of me trying to drag and drop i can also copy and paste effect so i want this to maintain this color to have this color so i'm going to click on this just come to my effect and preset for this shape click on the fill then ctrl c to copy and click on the circle here and then you can just do ctrl v and immediately you have that there for you so if i play this now they all have the same effects my composition is really zoomed so i'm going to click on this and then click on fit so i can see my star again right the next thing is i want to add glow effect to this star right now if i check the star they already have fill effect i want you to know that you can actually have multiple effects on one particular layer now i had fill effect on this star i'm about to add another effect on it just to make it glow one way of doing that is i can just you know cancel this and then type in glow and glow is under stylize i can just click and then drop it on top of my star and as soon as i've done that let me click out can you see the difference between this and this you can see that the color is now more vibrant and if you check the effect control for this layer we have the glow effect as well and we have so many settings that we can tweak you know you can go into this and just try and tweak this down now if i zoom in a little bit more i use my answer to just adjust I really want to see this star very well but unfortunately the andos is getting to the way of me seeing what is really going on here so how do we deactivate the andos uh the shortcut is shift ctrl h 
you can see that the star is still selected but because of the short handles disappear you will not see it but it's actually the one that's been selected and I actually did that because I can't see my star very well in case you run into problems like this maybe you mistakenly press shift ctrl h and you've probably forgotten and you're like oh i'm selecting something i can't see it and all click on shift ctrl h for mark is shift command h so i'm going to leave it this way and then i'll try and tweak my glow settings so i'm going to try and tweak this increase the radius can you see it's now becoming more interesting i can increase the intensity right and i think that is good enough for me you can go ahead and still keep tweaking to get what you really want but this is good enough for me so i'm going to just click on my magnification tool and click on fit and what I, one other thing i can do is to click on my glue ctrl c get to the other star which is this star and ctrl v right and they have the same thing so if i play this now if i drag this back and play this now we have this cool animation one last thing we want to do is we want to animate this text the last video we talk about text presets so i want to apply that into this so i'm going to click on my text and then i'll just type in the preset that i want i i'll go with i think slow slow fade on so if i click on this and then i drop if i play this it is slowly fading your text. I can click on my text and press U to reveal the keyframes that are responsible for this preset. Then I can make it faster. I can alight, easy ease, graph editor. You guys know this process already. Then just tweak this a bit. And if I play this, I have this, right? Play this. Even though I think that's really, really, really fast, so I'm going to drag this back out. So if I play this, right? One other thing I would like to do is to add a position animation to this. So I'm going to press, I'm going to press Shift P, then go to my positioning. Make sure it's on two seconds already. Then set this position right there. Record that. Then take this back. And then just drag it down. I need to get back my handles. This is why you need your handles most of the time. So I'm going to press Shift Command H for Windows. It's going to be Shift Control H. And now I can see my handles again. And I'm going to alight this again. Easy ease F9 for easy ease. Go to my graph editor, alight this, then tweak. And if I play this now. you have this simple animation so one other thing i like to do is to animate the text out so i'm going to expand this right so from here to here it's revealing right and i can just take it i can put my time indicator on three seconds then go to animation preset so uh, let me just search for one go to text then go to animate out let me just do encode fade out i will just drop it on this and as soon as that happens i'm going to press u press u again and i need to just zoom out some more apparently this timeline is too short for the all of the animation because it's actually way beyond five seconds so what i can do is this i can select this end select the end itself and then you click on one then you cannot drag it back if you drag it back it will drag the two value at the same time Right, so I can just drag it till I see it, then take this and drag it forward so I can see my two keyframe short. I want it to be one second, right? So if I play this now, I have something like this fade out. But I want it to happen really, really fast. So I'm going to take this, take drag, drag it back here, and I like this. Easy ease, graph editor, take this and squash it. Yeah, and if I play this, right, so we have something interesting. But one thing I would like to show you, which you probably must have been wrestling in the previous video, probably. If I close this and then open my text again, 
right i'm going to close this animator one animator two and close this transform so all of this are in your text transform has to do with position scale rotation and all of that so i'm going to close this now if you notice all of this animator all these presets are in your text the very first one that we drag in is the animator one which is the slow fade on right slow fade on comes up don't forget we had a position animation as well this this is just to show you that we can actually combine different kind of animation using your transform properties and also adding text presets to it as well right and the animator 2 is the encode fade out so it's 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 from here it's fading out you might see them as dots you if you see them as dots you can't unlight anything until you press u right if you press u then this is when you can now see them but if you press u you'll be seeing the range selector you will not be seeing the animator one or two that is driving it so that's why i just had to quickly show you that so it depends on what you it depends on the preset you drag in first will be your animator one the second one will be animator two and you know if you have another preset it's going to be animator three you know it goes like that one other beautiful thing you can do is you can click on your animator then press enter and then you can name your preset that you just added so the first one is slow fade on so i'm just going to type in slow fade on so i can easily recognize it then i'll click on animator two press enter then type and code fade out right so i can easily recognize the presets you've added so that is it for this video so let me just take this back press my caps lock so i won't have that error press u u again and if i play this i have this cool animation the takeaway from this is you go to your effects and presets to look for the effect you want to add and remember fill is to add color and it's best for you to change your the color of your layers using fill and of course i also added gradients to my background and always check your effect control to tweak the settings of your effects